All right, friends, we are starting our adventure. Passing the Waffle House. 9, 10 a.m. Saturday. Walking down the lane. Birdie. He moved. He moved. Yeah. He moves when you sit next to him. That was a little scary. Looks deserted. <laughs> yeah. And now everybody spreads out. Batmobile. Oh, you're awesome. Are you getting it? Nice. Mr. DNA. Awesome. Mm. Mm. Group. Balloon group. Wow. Oh, this, I just know. This, this is called a Q and A panel. 
this allows you the opportunity to yeah. ask questions. All right. Now, if you want to ask a question, it's really simple. You're going to want to line up right over here. This is Rocky, our volunteer. Just raise his hand right here. Come stand right here in a formal line. You're going to form a line. The line's going to go right here and around the final wall there. Now, for those of you who are attending your very first time, a lot of people make this mistake. Don't let it happen to you. A lot of you are thinking, well, I'll wait. I'll wait until the panel gets started. What always happens, we can't get to all the questions. There's so many people in it. So if you're thinking about it, don't be shy. Come and line up right now. Rocky will get you all yeah, perfect. Uh, line up right here. Perfect right here. Right, right here. Perfect. Yep. Perfect right there. Line up. Don't be shy about lining up right now because this way you guys will have a chance to ask your questions. Every panel, yeah, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Every panel, somebody's like, they always wait, then they get up there and they always come to me and they're like, we didn't have time. And they didn't ask a question. I can't help that. We run out of time, we run out of time. So, go ahead and line up right over here where I go ask your questions. We do have a few rules. George, if we can put the we can, we can put the slide up about rules. We have a few rules in here if you're going to ask a question. You can only ask one question, right? You always only get asked one question. Number two, ask your question in one minute or less. Number three, no personal request. That means you can't ask, like, can I get a photograph? Can I get a hug? Can I get an autograph? You can't ask for that type of stuff. You look shocked. It's like, wait, what? We don't do it. Because the reason, I mean, that would be really fun, but the problem is it takes so much time. So we, we don't want to, so no personal requests. So we understand that no personal requests. Okay, good. No questions about politics. Can I get it? Okay! Good. She looks upset. Good. You want questions sure. about politics? <laughs> you, want, you want to talk about politics right now? <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is negative. All right. Also, lastly, we're not going to ask any questions that would be considered offensive to the performers and also to the audience. They're going to keep our questions fine. Other than that, you can ask any questions you pretty much want to go for. I will say this. We're going to try to do no repeat questions. So if somebody asks a question and you're waiting in line and they ask your question, have a second question so that way you can, you can, you can feel good about it and do your second question. Again, how many here are taking for the very first time? Raise your hand. Excellent. So this, guys, I just I flew in two days ago, and like when I got down here, the day that I flew in, I couldn't get to my hotel. They had this big, huge problem at down at the police department. Somebody went in last during the night and stole all the toilets and urinals. Did you guys hear about this? And the detectives report they have nothing to go on. Two days. I told you, the party. Really? The one guy that he's like, I got it, I got it. Everybody else is like, this is terrible. This is really. We paid for this? Don't worry. It gets better. It's going to get better. We want to get started on time, guys. We're going to go check. We're going to get. What's that? Oh, we want to get started here on time. I'm going to go check and see where we are. Our celebrities are almost here. Then we'll get started on time, guys, and we'll get going. You guys are awesome. Let's go back with the music. Yeah, you had a smock. <laughs> <laughs> I 
They're, 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 they're Jesus from the Walking Dead, if that's appropriate to where we are at the moment. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I thought the question, I'm hearing crazy speak, I don't know, but I thought, I thought the question was, what is your favorite color? Yes. Okay. And the color of Jesus' coat was my favorite. Which I asked. Oh, the real Jesus. Like, I can't, I can't, even, it's like this, so I can't quite understand. But anyway, um, my favorite color, it depends on the time of day. <laughs> I like bluer colors during the day and warmer colors at night. I'm sure we have a, a lot of questions to get through. <laughs> Cooper. My favorite color is red. Rainbow. <laughs> How about you, Josh? What's your favorite? Just green. 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 <laughs> Next question. Green. Especially Alana, the pike that hurt me the most. I know it hurt my neck. <laughs> I have a question for Cooper because when I tell you I have always worried about you and the Bila, how do it feel to have maintained the only two parent household in Walking Dead history? The only one. <laughs> <laughs> the only one. <laughs> Y'all did. I was very proud of it. The, the trick was to let Nabila do all the work <laughs> for that while Jerry does adventures. That was, that was the parenting trick. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Camila. Feels good. You're gonna do shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, what's your favorite character? <laughs> so, like, what's your favorite character? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. How many characters are there even in The Walking Dead now? Like a thousand? Four million. Does it include Walkers? I'd like to say that she didn't quantify it by Walking Dead. She's his favorite character. Oh, that's, that's true. true. So, Batman. Batman. <laughs> Batman. 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 Uh, Father Gabriel was my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> I like Judith. Yeah, Judith is a good character. I like Tony Soprano. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If you guys could bring any like Walking Dead character back from the dead, would it be and why? Tara. <laughs> Uh, did, did it cause though, like, with well, the show, it's such a unique dynamic because characters, beloved characters, are killed off. And was that cause a lot of, like, anxiety? Were you waiting to get the script? Were you wondering? Or did you know, like, what's going to be happening? Did you ever have that fear? Like, is this, the, is this my time? It depends if you've signed a contract on a new apartment or not. <laughs> how much stress you're under, whether you're going to get kicked off the show. Excellent. That, that definitely <laughs> happened to a few people. They're like, they just signed a lease on a new apartment. And then they got killed on the show, which is which is very heartbreaking for some people, obviously. But I think everyone's in a different situation on the show, you know, with their private lives and also their characters and stuff. So people feel very differently about it. I think. Were you ever worried that you would get killed off? I was never worried. I was assured by the higher ups at ABC that there was no way they were ever killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I should just sit back in my comfort zone and let the chips fall where they may for everyone else. Some bullshit. <laughs> what was the book? Oh, there, I don't think there was a question. Yeah. Let's go ahead. This cute kid has a question. Yes. What was the most favorite season to film on The Walking Dead? Season 4. Season 11. <laughs> 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 was, was season four your first? Season four was my yeah, first. Yeah, season six, which was my first. Because you always get like a big fun introduction and, and, and then you just kind of meander along for a bit until you get killed. But yours was your first season was pretty fun as well, I think. Yeah, I, I, like, season nine was, was, was fun, I thought. I mean, for like, the beginning, because it was like the last time 
we all wore it together, you know, it was like... I died in this <laughs> I know, but... I <laughs> so did I! I mean, it, like, it, it felt like the feeling of like, when like, all, the, like, all the, you know, the seniors left high school, and I was like, oh man, this is like... Damn it! Yeah, it was like the, like the fun, fun times. It was all fun times, but... My favorite season, I, I don't remember which season it was, but it was the season where Father Gabriel uh, lost his full vision in his right eye, and I got to wear the contact lens and freak people out on set. <laughs> <laughs> was the contact lens annoying to put in? The contact lens was not annoying to put in because uh, Justin Faith, who was my lens tech, would baby me and treat me like a little rock star and, you know, pamper me, so it was never really registered to me that she was sticking a foreign object in my eye. And could you see out of it or no? I could so, not see. It was like putting your face in a bowl of milk and opening your eyes. Don't, don't to suggest see doing that anymore. No, no, but it was like that. Not, not that I ever really did that. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> to the rest of the cast, even off the show? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> we keep, no, we, some of us won't hang, but we, we get these conventions, so it's yeah. always like a... Coming to the conventions. That was interesting when I saw Tom, he pretended to be on the phone, and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm standing next to him and he sees me starting to make eye contact and he reaches back down and he answers the phone with him. I thought that was interesting. I was, I'm dealing with like homes, like I have a baby now. Thank you. Oh, yeah, use the baby. Yeah, use the baby. <laughs> use the baby. <laughs> you know what it's like to have a baby. Yeah. 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 I have to always be checking on the babies out there. More important things in life. <laughs> Yes. Do you, um, what's one thing about your character that us, The Walking Dead fans, maybe don't know? Maybe something that got cut, or...? Um, I had a boyfriend at the beginning of season nine. I think season nine. And he got Ooh, cut. you had a boyfriend. Yeah, I did. I had a, it was in a script that I got, which is why they never give the actors the script. Uh, until like the last minute, because there's always stuff that gets changed. But I did have a boyfriend uh, in one of the drafts of the script. Um, I still meet people who don't realize that Jesus was into men. <laughs> I still get people that didn't never that never registered because they didn't make enough of a well. This not that they should make a deal out of it, but like it was never um, it wasn't as big a deal as the girls after I left. <laughs> but um, and then. There was a lot, my character had a lobster bib. They like to like drop these little things in that and they don't they don't tell you what it's all about either. So it was like this this random line I had with Lauren where I was talking about like, oh all I've got at home is a lobster bib. <laughs> it was so random and never explained, never a lobster bib. Really odd. I guess, I guess I used to work in a fish place. They told me when I when I said before I started that my character was a uh, uh, had a terrible gambling addiction, and so I did like, all this research about gambling addicts, and, and then they just never got to it. After a few months, I was like, "Hey, so what's like my big gambling like you know scene?" Oh, like, oh yeah, we just couldn't figure it. They fit it in. I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> cool. <laughs> this fucking. Character I, mean, there, I mean, there was tons of stuff that got cut all the time. Lots of stuff. Yeah. Father Gabriel had 11 toes. <laughs> which made him an extraordinary swimmer. <laughs> As three of them were webbed. <laughs> I, everything got, I think everything got left in. Yeah, there's not really much of a mystery or <laughs> hidden things. So that's what you get. There it is. He's there, so I know it's me. Yeah. You're welcome. I answered that really well. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Uh, this was technically originally just for the character of Jesus, but I'd also like to hear about Terrors too. Number one, um, Tom, you were my favorite character on the show, and up there is one of my favorite characters on TV in general. Um, and the death on the show devastated me. 
and it was funny because the other dad in the TV that devastated me was Obi Winston on Sons of Anarchy, so I thought it was kind of poetic that <laughs> your death came from him. How, um, how, how was that funny? <laughs> I, said, I said poetic. Oh, uh, uh, no, you said because it's funny, but one of my favorite deaths. Because so. <laughs> it is fucking okay. funny. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Just confused. But my main question is, is like, were you satisfied with how Jesus went? And I guess the same thing for Tara. And do you think there's anything else that could have been, like, is there more that Jesus could have done? Or Jerry? Take five seconds, Tom. Take five seconds. Yes. What, what would Jesus do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> God, that's easy. Um, so, I think Jesus would have been really fun against the Whisperers. Um, although he was the first person to die for one. You know, it would have been a really cool thing to, for him to have done. I was happy with the way that it all ended. I thought it was really cool that that he got killed in the way that he did. Like he didn't like get bit like Carl and spent a whole episode dying. <laughs> like, he, like he like just got stabbed and that was it. I thought that was a really cool way to end it. And I was happy with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was cool with it. It's three years. It's a long time to be on the show. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that answer has changed over the last three years. That's good. Has it? <laughs> yeah. I, I seem to remember being on a panel with you a few years ago <laughs> where you were a little unhappy. <laughs> oh, about, no, I wasn't unhappy about dying. I, no, you were unhappy with all of the, well, to borrow Josh's thing about reading about the gambling addict, to all the training that you had done. Yeah. That, that you just did. But that's why I was happy about dying. Because I was like, I had done all this work for like martial arts work and all this kind of stuff and character work, and we never used any of it apart from to fight Morgan. And I'm like, okay. I was really happy to have that scene with fighting Lenny and Morgan. That was, that was really fun, but like, I thought like he could have had a bit more. Like in the comic books, he fights Negan, he does all this like cool shit. And him, him and um, Aaron fight Vader, and like, it's, all this cool stuff happens and none of it happened. So I was like, okay. I'm good with dying. <laughs> if we're not going to do any of it, then that's cool. Happy? Yes, I am. I think that's, a, I think that's the answer that I'm looking for. You can't go from five seconds, five seconds to say what you said three years ago. Sickos. 
They, the people that dressed up in zombie skins called them walkers and sickos. No, she said magna. Oh, magna. Oh, okay. They called the dead people guardians? Yeah, the whispers. The whispers. They're stupid, that's why they're bad. Meat lover, but he waited. Ooh, a meat lover. <laughs> <laughs> Get a meat lover pizza. <laughs> Alright, if anybody thinks of anything else, shout it out. <laughs> Lame brain. Lame brain. Lame brain? Jesus, I gotta pay more attention. <laughs> So, Alright, our next question. Uh, we see you like guys fighting on screen. Like, what's your level of okayness with like fighting? Like what do you like about the fighting scenes? And at what point is it like, nope, that's too much, somebody else jump in? Those two guys could really fight. Tom with the training that he did. Uh, for the show, learned all kinds of, I don't, I don't know what kind of martial arts it was, but I saw a videotape of some of his training thing with, he was flipping off a wall or something like that. He ran up and flipped off a wall and came down and kicked it. And Cooper does like fight choreography and also is well, well versed in uh, various martial arts. Um, I'm one of those kick you in the nuts and run type of dudes. <laughs> I don't need to be fighting anybody. You know, <laughs> good summer clubs will work for me from across the street. I don't know about you, Josh. I don't know, I have had people for that. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she I did some shit. I did some shit. Um, uh, you go basically, you kind of don't ever really end up using your double. Unless it's something really, really dangerous, but you mostly want to be doing it. You're exhausted, but you're having so much fun. Like, that's your job to be able to run and fight and hit people. And the stunt teams are all always so amazing, and their crews are so great. It just is a really fun. You don't really go, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to do it anymore. You just have like this crazy adrenaline rush. So that's what uh, I think. When I was pregnant, I did all the stunts. You know, I was like hiding, like scaling the wall. I was strapped up. Marlo was the little baby in my belly. Um, and then I did all the other stunts after I had her. Because that's what you do in life. Does it bother you, Tom, that they allowed a pregnant woman to do more? Even though you trained for six months. Does it upset Six months, you? three years. I love you, Seth. Um, I really enjoyed all of it, and I was pretty capable um, the whole way through, just waiting for them to give me stuff to do. Um, the fight with Morgan was the best, the most I ever did, and Lenny was really capable as well with his sticking around. I was there that day, it was amazing. Really was fun to do that, because we both kind of, we built up to that whole moment, but absolutely exhausted, like, and it starts to get a bit dangerous because you're both exhausted, so then you do, you will sub in your stunt guys for certain moments just because it gets really dangerous. And like, Morgan, like, Lenny's like swinging, literally swinging that stick at my head, and if I don't duck, then I get hit in the head. Um, he, he hit me a couple times, and it just, yeah, the more you do it, the more dangerous it gets, but it also the kind of the better it gets as well because it does get really close and you do like almost get, you know, so it adds to it, but most of the time you try and do as much as you can. I mean, my first day on set, no, my first episode on set, um, Rick gets like wrestled to the ground and there's a big fight at the hilltop and me, I was like looking around like, okay, so when's the stunt double coming in? When's, when's Andrew and can stunt double coming in? And it just didn't happen and I was kind of astonished that the biggest show on television was allowing the lead actor to wrestle around on the floor with a guy who was there for one episode. And like, it just, just doesn't happen. And, and when you first join The Walking Dead, there is a lot of, welcome to The Walking Dead, and you're like, this is so cheesy. But you're just like, oh my god, it's, like, it was kind of different to other shows, and they did wrestle in the dirt, people did get hurt. And I'm, I'm actually astonished that you know, none of the main lead actors ever really got, actually like, broke something or anything on the show, because because they did let the actors do a lot more than you normally would on shows, which is very surprising to me. You, you had a different axe, right? Because you have like... Yeah, I went from the, yeah, went from the axe to the sword, 
I think that was purely for a visual effects standpoint. But, but the action's really heavy. Oh, yeah, the action's super heavy. When I first went uh, handy. It's called an axe if it has. It's like a double bearded axe. Double bearded axe. There's other, other signs of two sided axe, maybe. But they are. Uh, uh, yeah, and he was like, is that, a, is that a, supposed to be a fake axe? Because it was painted. So they put us a real wax. He's like, it's supposed to be a fake wax on the show. And I hand it to him, and then he goes, what the fuck? <laughs> and then, you know, it's a you know, funny moment where Norman handing it to him. He's like, let me see that. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> Passing it around. Did you ever call it a fax? No. <laughs> <laughs> like a fat act. A fax. A fake ax. A fax. A fake act. I should have been. You should be like, here's my fax. I like having the real axe though, because I lean on it. If you notice, but we have all those. It was really here. heavy. You also, well, Michonne, weird. or Denai mostly, would walk around with her sword and never pay attention, so she would be like twirling. <laughs> and like her, do you remember ever getting hit in the face with her sword? She was always hitting you. You were always really good about the axe, not I, getting. No, I don't, I, I feel guilty forever. Yeah, it was like in Denai's back, and she would just twirl and whack somebody. Yeah, yeah, we, we, Josh and I can't speak on that. We signed uh, disclosure. Uh, <laughs> well, I died on the show. Speak about other people's props. Well, yeah, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got, yeah, we've got Excellent. Next question. Trail, so. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great question. Okay, so my question is, when can we expect to see all of you guys in another show? Like, what's your next project that you're working on? I'm retired. <laughs> I'm an actor of purgatory. <laughs> so, um, Shazam 2 in theaters, March 17th. Yeah. Yeah. It's my new company. Yeah, I'm pushing it. Same time as Teen Wolf movie? The Teen Wolf movie came on uh, Paramount Plus three, four weeks ago. Are you, so, are you in it? Yeah. You're in it right now. Highest rated show on Paramount Plus ever. Yes, the highest rated show on, on Paramount Plus ever. And, uh, I, I promise. First, check it out. It was a really wonderful experience. Hey. 
My inspiration was that I wanted to um, really tap into what I think we are all look for no matter what we do. I'm in a position where you can see me on the big screen, you can turn me on today, and you can, you know, you, you see a lot of me. But, but, but I believe it's true of any artist who's a painter. Um, I love Comic-Cons because we get to come and we get to play and be in wonder. But what I'm getting at is expression, right? Our lives are expression. No matter what we do, we have to communicate and we can't do it alone. So we're part of a larger expression. And for me, I realized I was good at, at play acting, um, and which has guided me to realize that I'm, I'm, I'm good at expressing myself. So that requires being a halfway decent communicator, and, and which is why I earlier said ask yourself what you want um, and see if you can answer that question. Uh, in every moment, in every day of your life, because that propels you to understand who you are. So there's an interior world and an exterior world. We, at this time in history, are very involved in the exterior world, the world of, of, of everything that's shown to us, the shiny things, the great cars, the advertising that tells us how to dress, that tell us how we'll be accepted. But when do we reflect ourselves back to the interior world, which is what I have to do? In what I do, yeah, I'm on a big screen of given lines and characters, but I, I venture to say the reason I love what I do is because I've got to develop the interior world. That's beyond the words. All right, we'll get the class elevator, the skyline elevator. Oh, we're down here now. Bet fist. Oh, because they know. They know. They know what bridge this is. Yep. They know what it is. Boom! There it is, guys. Awesome. Want to get out of paper? Oh, there it is. That's awesome. The bridge. Awesome. I can see the horse. Yeah. Stormtrooper fishing. Well, 
Willy Wonka. Are there coasters? Those are clone troopers. Clone troopers. <laughs> It was so rich, and it's those moments that are filled with history, you know, for all of us, because we've been you know, through movies and TV shows. So that's what counts, honestly. There, please. <laughs> Rob and I have been through years of therapy. I've been through years of therapy to deal with this very issue. I uh, know, uh, it's. Um, wasn't illegal. It's what it is. Whatever keeps the ball up in the air and makes you guys happy. Can you say anything about the the one and about season six? About the what? The one and season six. Um, I, we haven't read, we haven't seen what season six actually is. We have a, you know, we know the direct, the general direction of the overall A storyline, but we don't have. Uh, they just, like I mentioned, they just started uh, writing, and we're we're waiting to uh, get a, have our first meeting of here. We're going. That's uh, that's just the way you know work, it works. The whole writing staff gets together and they kind of map it out. So we're waiting like you are. We're the, we're the fans that you are. We just get to play in the sandbox. You guys, please give a huge round of applause. Impressed by what happened, what's happened to Atlanta over the last like 20 years, 
and I've been coming here kind of on and off. I think I shot a movie here, a TV movie here. I, I don't want to say how long ago. Okay. <laughs> I'm keeping that close to the best. You guys know probably how old I am, but I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> right. At any anyway, rate, it's a great town, I must say. They, they, most of you folks from around here? Questions, but I kind of before we get into our question there, I have some of my own that I kind of want to talk about. I just do you realize the the cultural impact that you had with Jack Skellington? That it was such a did you realize when you guys were you doing the voice work for that how profound how long lasting that that was going to last? Not a clue. No, I, I mean I don't think that, I mean probably if you talk to any actor who's been in a movie that is popular. Uh, if, if, you, if, if you ask them when they started rehearsals, or if they rehearsed, uh, if, you, if they started work on the movie, if, if it was going to be a, a, a sort of cultural touchstone, something that you know people watch forever and ever, uh, and they would probably tell you no, and I, that's my answer. Uh, I, I knew it was remarkable going in uh, to the to the actual performance of working with Henry Selleck, the director. Um, but I had no idea that it would have this kind of afterlife. None. And, and pretty much the same thing with Princess Bride. Yeah. Same, same thing. You know, movies that started off okay, you know, Princess Bride did reasonably well and came out, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas did pretty well when it came out. But just the fact that they have not only endured, but that the people are, uh, you know, dedicating rooms in their homes to, to <laughs> right? I'm sure if you don't, you know people who do. Uh, who at Halloween decorate their homes with like their more Christmas themes, uh, who, who you know, dress up like Prince Albert and, you know, and carry all this in, you know, the Robin Ryan, whatever. Uh, it, it's extra an extraordinary phenomenon, but it's also um, a testament to the fact that these are enduring works. Oh, uh, I think she's got a frightening shirt on. <laughs> uh, fun, actually. Interesting that you would you wouldn't think that you know working on a movie that had very serious uh, uh, a content, vampires and people dying, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of it was because the cast are they're all and they're still friends. We're all friends. We see each other whenever we can. If, if there's and all of us are there, we go out to dinner together. Uh, it's a real kind of, you know, we bonded shooting a movie because they're all very smart people. They're all, particularly a couple of them, Willie Braxdale is one of the funniest human beings alive. Um, Jonathan Stark came from improv, so he's a very funny guy. Amanda Burst, the same thing. Uh, and Tom Holland, our director, and Ronnie McDowell, uh, rest his soul. A wonderful person, and we just had a we had a wonderful time shooting the movie. Uh, the set was very lighthearted, uh, and at the same time collaborative, because Tom Holland, the director, used to be an actor, so Tom very much was into. Again, we're talking about you know characters' motivations and what they're after and what they're. And we had rehearsal as well, uh, which is very rare for movies, particularly movies like this, where we spent like a couple of three weeks creating backstories for all of our characters, uh, and a lot of the stuff that ended up in the movie came out of conversations we had about the character's history. Uh, like, uh, for instance, um, uh, I kept doing, you know, how do you research vampire? Somebody who's been living for 400 years, we have to kind of look at the history of where this person, or you have to make up a history of where this person came from, right? Maybe he came from Eastern Europe somewhere, or, or most probably. Uh, but then I started researching, well, I, where else can I find? Let me look up bats. What are, what's the history of bats? What are they like? Because vampirism uh, uh, essentially, supposedly, came from the original vampire bat, right? And I found out that 90% of the bats in the world are not vampire bats. They're fruit bats. So I asked Tom, I said, is it possible we can work fruit into the, maybe Jerry has some fruit, you know, some, some fruit bat in his DNA. And that's how the apple came to, to exist that Tom ended up using 
in the movie and uh, Jerry eats fruit all the time. So it, it was very cool and a, 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 a really interesting way to work. Yeah, thank you. Father Gabriel is added. Brazilians have a thing called acai berry, and it's 
very, a lot of antioxidants, a lot of very good antioxidants. It's clean down your bowels. It's very good for you, believe me. Very good for you, your body. It's very good. You're going to love it. Wow. <laughs> Try not to stay married. It's the best thing. It'll clean out your bowels like it. Nothing else, believe me. Nothing cleans my bowels like I'll stay married. <laughs>
hang up. My first friend on the show was Alex, actually. Um, we were staying at the, the same hotel. There was like only a few of us in the beginning from the Alexandrians. Yeah. And um, we weren't allowed to talk about the show, of course, until it came out. And I remember seeing her on American Horror Story. And I was like, hey, are you here for a project? She's like, yeah, I'm working on the walk. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm doing that too. And then we got a bottle of moonshine from one of those crew. <laughs> <laughs> or a jar, I should say. And we polished that thing off in one night, and we became fast friends. <laughs>
don't know. I mean, it's been like a pretty big time jump, right? I mean, I feel like I feel like they're all pretty expensive. Yeah, the Path of Redemption. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a super guy now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he really murdered his friends, man. He only he only just murdered like a few people. Yeah. <laughs> what, okay, hold on. But if you look at it objectively, the amount of people that like Rick and the gang have murdered versus like the amount of people that Negan and you know what I mean? Like, okay, dude, at that satellite outpost, I was I was looking back at that episode not too long ago, and I was like, man, they just went in and rolled in and killed like 30 people. <laughs> but, was it not justified? <laughs> they didn't get everybody. Listen, man, I'm not saying that either side is better. I'm saying it. You're really not? You're not going to take a side on this? <laughs> I'm on Rick's side. That's your side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. True. She was not a polygamist yet, so that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Is that the term for that? Yep. Poly polygamist. Polygamist. Go ahead. Um, my question is for Chandler. Um, do you think that if Carl didn't die, you still would have done a million little things? Oh, that I still would have done a million little things? Um, probably not. No. And I'm really glad that I that I was able to. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, I, I did another show for, I was on another show for a while called A Million Little Things. And uh, it was just an awesome character to play. He struggled with depression, mental illness, and attempted suicide at the end. And uh, it was just an awesome, awesome role to step into. It really good to um, to explore that that side of, um, of of a character and get to connect with with people and audiences in that way and give you know a, people a character to relate to. It was, it was really great. Thank you. Of course. I never in 
that story? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I for, for a long time, I asked Scott Gimple if there was ever going to be a resolution because we see Deanna several episodes later as a walker, and who gets the Derek? Who takes out Deanna? Oh, Spencer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, and I was hoping for like some sort of resolution, and then Scott was like, you know walks into the woods and these guys, they go random in their movements that it would be weird for him to just stumble upon him. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But I was really hoping there would be a moment where he could put him down uh, because, yeah, that was, that was tough work, I think. And, but he got to do it with Jesus, so that's cool. You know? yeah. I mean, he got to put Jesus out of the desert, so that's, you know, that's a plus. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Question is, um, can you tell us anything about Dead City or Summit or the Jail spinoff? I don't think any of us know anything. You can tell us anything. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> though. It looks cool. I've seen some of the trailers. It looks really cool. Are they filming in Paris or something? Well, no, that's the Daryl one. The one, the Dead, 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 Dead City's in Jersey. They filmed like in Jersey. What's the Paris one called? Dixon. Oh, just Dixon. That's right. <laughs> oh, Dixon. <laughs> That's in France somehow, because his motorcycle can fly. He's going to film it there. <laughs> I don't know how the hell he winds up there. And then Rick and Michonne, I think, is in Virginia or something? That's oh, the Jersey that's Jersey. Jersey. Oh, okay, I guess it's You guys are more than we do with this. Wouldn't it be funny though, they're like, so you guys are going to go to Jersey. Norman, you're going to go to Paris. And he's like, oh, hell yeah. And everyone's like, what? We're going to Jersey? No offense to Jersey people. I mean, but come on. Jersey or Paris. Just for fun, Ross, because you're so talented. I already they saw a little dabbling with your Donald Trump. Could you do a John C. Riley for a reason to hear your impersonations? They're so good. Uh, man, I feel like John C. Riley would be really fun to walk in there because he's a wreck it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Quiet, everything, and I don't know. I think they do really well. Um, 
but the Clippers, man, no for those guys. You watch the game? I played the game, so I Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, those Clippers are crazy. It's just the fact that the fast moving zombies are the scariest thing, man. No, Greg Otero, he's a zombie purist. He's like, oh, slow movie's better, but I'm like, nah, man. Like, 28 days later, days of the last cross, mm -hmm. zombies. So scary. Way scarier. Just overpowered. I yeah. feel like anybody who could shoot with a gun or an arrow would be okay, but anybody who's like close hand to hand combat. Yeah, I don't think a stick is going to do anything. Yeah, anymore. I'm sorry. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? <laughs> Alexander, Matt, you guys are all right? Hi. Ross, Chandler, we haven't met yet, but I'm going to the camp. I know you all might go, possibly schedule-wise, but Alexandra isn't, so I was wondering if there was any type of way you guys could convince her to go, because... <laughs> well, to see, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they know we can, but I don't know are you going to be great. More than we can. I don't even know what we can do this, but I already told you I'm not going. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I'm just hoping the um, because this seems like a thing for like every cast member, and it just seems so fun to like hang out with everybody. You know? so, uh, exactly. I don't think she knows, but it is my birthday month, so I might be doing something. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Thanks.
was playing, I, I don't remember exactly, I was playing a video game, I don't know what it was, I was in my room, and my, <laughs> my parents come in, and they're like, hey, you, you gotta answer this. I was like, what? <laughs> and it was just like, they just thought, yeah, 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 it's okay. Ron, she can't answer that. <laughs> But the second question is, The Walking Dead never pulled any punches. It never tried to hide the way people died or anything. But Matt, when, when your head went on the stage, how come it didn't just show all of that? It would have been, they didn't stop on anything. The trough scene and the Negan scene. And why did they not show that scene? Do you need to, do you need to see it? No, I didn't need to see it. Did you need to see Carl get the cap I mean, actually, I won't get the cap too. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I feel like, one, that would be kind of crazy show, but also, I kind of like that they did it because it was like the whole, like, shock factor of the fair and you not knowing how certain people got captured, but they did, and them just cutting to the barn and everyone captured. I think it, uh, the, the shock factor of it all was just insane. even me watching it I was like this is like insane and then not only that cutting from the barn to them hanging through the head was insane uh, so one they probably couldn't show I mean they, they could show the letter told I, I think it's more impactful to just I think it was I think it was more impactful yeah. but also it was it's him telling the story so I think it was through his his vision of no we don't want to show them getting the captain we want to show them fighting we want to show them they were they were brave and strong. Yeah. You guys here at the end of our time, please be you and land a welcome to Chandler, Daniel, Matt, and Ross. Thank you so much for coming out, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Let's go ahead. Yeah, you guys, the party doesn't end. You guys can go see them at the tables. You get autographs with them. Cereals. Friday night poster. Awesome. Say goodbye to Cooper. Gotta say bye to Jerry. Everybody's pretty much packing up. There's Ross. Ross.
A lot is gone, no! I wanted a bye bye! Everybody's gone. They're Seth. Seth. Father Gabriel. Alright, friends. Sad part. We're gonna wave goodbye. To Atlanta Comic Con. Bye bye. Two fan day Victoria. Out of the penguin. Gotta do it. Bye, penguin. Such an honor to meet you. <laughs> Best thing right there. You're a good man, penguin. <laughs> Best celebrity, the penguin. And there we go. Again, red deck level five. Mm -hmm. Row C. There we go. Car again. Oh, there it is. I never knew someone could be excited about going to the hospital. We went to a filming location. Oh, there it is. Walking Dead Hospital. Your destination is on the left. Thank you. Sweet. Is that it? Look for more. They lied to us. This thing didn't blow up. There it is. Turn left, then turn The Cobb? Then you will arrive at your destination. The Cobb Entertainment Center, also known as the CDC. There it is. Sweet. 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 Damn.